I think to set the context of this discussion, uh, I must share uh, this little bit of an experience with you. Every time, you know, one gets an opportunity to speak at education conferences of this kind or be a part of a panel discussion around the topic of technology or digitization in education, uh, it kind of intrigues me. I, I, I find it uh, uh, exciting, if I may say, uh, because, uh, you know, you look at, look at any other domain, look at any other landscape, look at healthcare, communications, entertainment, travel. How many of these domains or how many of those areas of our life have ever been debated whether technology or digitization will or will not have a role to play to bring in efficiencies uh, in that domain? Uh, you know, before we could debate, there were cell phones in everybody's hands. Uh, before we could debate, you know, you had uh, very progressive advancements in healthcare. Uh, and, you know, everything that we do in life has been so uh, deeply impacted by, by technology and, and it didn't really, you know, kind of pause to debate and then, you know, take the first baby steps towards it. It's a process of evolution. Uh, but now that it is happening, perhaps uh, good for education because, uh, you know, every single baby step that will be ever taken to impact education with technology will be very, very well thought through, uh, debated, understood, inferred, and so on and so forth. Having said that, uh, as we go about discussing uh, digitization and education, uh, and to set the context, I would like to very briefly touch upon the word uh, education itself. I mean, education has a very, very profound and very esoteric and very abstract definitions. Uh, if you were to, you know, look at the Wikipedia or you were to look at the dictionaries and so on and so forth. But I think to a, you know, a very commonsensical understanding of education is uh, perhaps the, you know, the, the transfer or the passage of existing knowledge from multitude of sources to one individual at, at all points of time, which is dynamic. And these multitude of sources from which the knowledge will, will, will transfer from, from one source to the individual uh, currently are, 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 are fairly, you know, specific. For instance, all the current knowledge that exists in the world, it exists in the minds of humans, it exists in the printed form in textbooks and manuscripts, and it exists in the, it is embedded in the memories of, you know, computers connected worldwide. Apart from that, it's very difficult to comprehend if there is any other source. And the knowledge moving from these sources, from the mind of a human, for instance, you know, all about biology concepts for grade eight are embedded in the teacher's mind. And when she gets to the class, she attempts to transfer that knowledge, you know, in bits and pieces to a group of students in a class uh, and she does it in a particular way, and there is a method and a methodology to do that. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, the, the effects or the enabling, enabling factors for this kind of a passage would predominantly be how easy is it to pass that information or that knowledge from one source to another, how fast and easy it becomes, and more importantly, when there is access to knowledge what kind of enablers are there to internalize that knowledge? For instance, a teacher in a classroom delivering some information to students, how much of that is really internalized will pretty much depend on the storytelling ability of the teacher in the class, and it will depend on the imagination of the child himself. And like Shantanu said a while ago, uh, it is a known fact that you know, a larger part of the students sitting in the classroom uh, are visual learners and all of us have been so. But inside the classrooms, uh, like I always say, been frozen in time. The, the classrooms for generations haven't changed. You step into the classroom, there is the chalkboard and there is a teacher, there are 40 students, there'll be a test held every six months uh, and results will be announced and you move on to the next class. And this has been happening ever since classrooms uh, have been there. And uh, you step out of the classroom, everything in our life is completely changed. 
So I think, uh, you know, the, the conclusion is that uh, I think this is this point in time in history where we should end the debate whether technology has or has not got a role to play in bringing efficiencies in education. Yes, it will. Now the question is, what kind of models, what kind of methods, uh, in which way should technology enable different parts of you know, education uh, is, is to be debated. And I'm joined by a very illustrious uh, uh, set of fellow panelists here. Uh, and uh, I think the good thing about this panel is that apart from, uh, besides me, uh, everybody else on the panel has had a very, very deep-rooted understanding, a 360-degree dive-in understanding of you know, what technology can and cannot do with their own experiences and the kind of institutions that they run. So with that, I would like to open a discussion around uh, the subject of digitization in education, uh, its role, the impact, the influence, what kind of challenges are we likely to face uh, as we go along, and what can it do for us?